Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com, and this is going to be the first part in a five-part uh, tutorial dealing with working with the camera. So I do want to show you a couple of things that I'm doing before we get started. One, if you notice my layout, I've got a couple of extra things going on. Uh, the I have a couple of toolbars set up, like I have advanced animation uh, added to my workspace. So if you come down to Windows, look at toolbars, you can find all the extra things. I have advanced animation and I also have a camera view toolbar and a drawing view toolbar. So there's a camera, actually here's the timeline toolbar and the drawing view toolbar. Uh, in addition to that, I have arranged things a little bit differently than uh, the default setting and I just saved my own setting here. So uh, that is a different tutorial and I don't really want to get, get too far into that unless I get a lot of requests. Uh, let's see, ah, shortcuts, this is very important. Go to Animate Preferences and for shortcuts, I have my shortcuts for this tutorial set to the Adobe Flash shortcuts. Now, if you looked at any of my earlier tutorials, I'm usually working with uh, setting up as Toon Boom Animate Shortcuts, but I've switched this to Adobe Flash. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK. Uh, let's see. Oh, one other thing. Forgot one last part. Uh, the rendering or the OpenGL. Uh, I have this turned to real time anti aliasing. That way, when I'm drawing, it isn't going to look too difficult or too bitmapped actually. So if I decide to draw a little design right there that looks very smooth versus if I decided to go OpenGL and uncheck that, it's going to look very, very bitmapped, but it still renders out very smooth. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in and Turn that back on. There we are. Okay, so those are a couple of the settings that I'm doing. I'm gonna zoom out here. And let's get rid of that little squiggly mark there. Now, what I wanna do is uh, get a decent looking uh, image and I just did a Google search for an image search, search for mountainscape because that's what I want to uh, work on here. So I found a nice image. I'm going to go ahead and import this. Uh, I would suggest finding your own image because uh, this is not something I'm going to tell you to download because it's not mine. I'm just using it as a reference and something to, to work from. One of my... Uh, Awesome um, teachers always told me to work from, not copy. So, uh, create a layer, sounds cool. Let's leave everything the same. Actually, I'm just gonna call this reference. Okay, and I'm not gonna change anything else here. Don't need it as a symbol, I'll just click on okay. All right, and I'm going to scale this down just a little bit and move it off to the side here. All right, so there's my reference. I'm going to go ahead and lock that in place. And I'm going to start building uh, some of the different layers here. And I think I'm going to probably build them, I guess build them in order. So I'm going to build the sky first. So I'm going to be building from the back to the front. Uh, and what I'll do, my sky, I think I'm just going to go in here and grab my brush tool, get on a different layer, and let's go ahead and make a new palette. And I like calling mine a sketching palette. Now let's add a new color. This is going to be my color erase blue. Uh, and this is based on traditional animation. 
there's always that beautiful color erase blue colored pencil. Uh, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, there's this awesome uh, type of colored pencils called color erase because they actually have erasers on the end and you can actually erase colored pencils. I remember when they first came out and they were awesome. Still are awesome. Anyway, green's going to be 255. Blue's going to be 255. And alpha's going to be about 130. Looks good. And we'll say OK. So what I'm going to do now is start working on sketching out what the sky would look like. And for the most part, it's going to be a nice little big old rectangle in the background just to kind of hold this there. I'm not trying to make this pretty. Just need to be able to fill this in later. And I'm going to put a few clouds in the background, some nice you know, I probably should have paid a little more attention to uh, figure out exactly what these clouds are called, but the long little streaky ones, it's kind of cool. All right, so there are my clouds. Uh, yeah, those are going to be there for now. And that's all I want to do for the sky layer. Let's add another layer, another drawing layer. And going to call these, uh, I think we'll pretty much call these background mountains. Uh, so we can call this mountain. Put this in the back. All right, and so I'm going to start drawing out. It's kind of, again, just kind of looking at what's there as a reference. Okay. And I want to make sure I go outside of our main area here, because this is where I'm going to be filling in. Uh, I want to be able to actually do a few camera tricks later, so I want to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. All right, and let's add another layer. Okay, and these are going to be I'm going to probably come up with some better names for these mountains back two. And this one's going to be a little more. And let's move this over here. Okay. All right, and let's see, we have one, two. Now, the cool thing is the, you could make this as involved as you'd like, and the more layers, quite frankly, the cooler it looks. So I'm going to add mountains foreground. I'm going to re undo that one and make this a little more interesting. Okay, and one more, I'm going to call this, we're going to make this the river. River, sea, water thingy. And it's going to drag this right across here, make a big old rectangle thingy, sort of. All right. And last but not least, we'll add another layer. And this will be our foreground trees. All right. So this is going to be this nice foreground piece there. And I 
have some little trees. And I know what you're thinking. Dude, this really looks awesome. You should really, really make a book on drawing. Well, here's the deal. I am making these very ugly, ugly little trees here. And the background, there's no color I'm worried about or any of that stuff. I am just roughing this out uh, just to get an idea and to see if everything is going to work the way I'd like it to work. And this is the way I like to break it down. Bake the cake first, or get your cake ready first. Frost it later, because if there are eggshells in your batter, no one cares what kind of frosting it is. Okay? That's just something I like to work with. Anyway, so we have all these pieces, and it's a good time to save. So let's go up and look at select. This almost looks a little confusing. Uh, just very, I haven't actually colored anything in or tried to shade anything, but just getting our little ideas together here. And what I want to do next is I'm going to pretty much add in our camera view. So I no longer need my reference. Go bye bye. And let's go up to Windows and come down and you'll see the one that says top. Okay. Now, the only tricky part right now is the fact that this looks like you can kind of see these little faint outlines of all the different layers. So what I want to do, uh, just to make our lives a little bit easier, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start filling in our backgrounds, if you will all the different layers and what I want to do, let's see, I think I'm going to, I'm going to leave the sky alone, but I don't want to go to that first one, the mountain back here and I'm just going to click to fill that in and go to the next layer, click to fill this in, go to the next layer, yep, wrong frame, next layer and now click to fill this in. And the river, hmm, we have all this blue. I'm going to add another color here. Let's go new. And we'll make this color race white. And let's change our color. And still leave the same alpha there, the same transparency. And we'll fill this area in. Ah, looks like we have a hole there. No worries, we'll just tell it to close medium gaps. Ah, perfect. Okay, so that's our water. And then we have the foreground trees. And let's go back to our color erase fill. Looks good. And let's go to our select tool. All right, it looks a little tricky, um, but we have the background and everything happening pretty decent. Uh, let's see, let's make our foreground color a little bit different. Okay, so if we actually fill that with white so we can see a little bit uh, better what's happening here. So eventually this will be some awesome color and we'll have some nice illustrations going. But for right now, we just need to be able to see what's going on. So let's go to windows again. Let's go to top. And now you can see a little bit better the different layers. There's the foreground layer with the trees and then there's the water. And there's one of our mountains. There's another one and there's another one. So if we're looking right here, this is uh, looking, if we're looking directly on top of this, so all these are flat and all of them are right where this one single line is. So if you can tell, like right now, if I click here, it's only stretched away across part of that view. And that's what we're viewing here. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and add the top view uh, to my workspace here. So I'm going to simply click the tab and drag it straight to right where it says color. 
So now I can either use color or click and I actually have the top view. All right, so I'm gonna use my hand and move this down a little bit. So what I wanna start doing is separating these out uh, so they're not in the same Z space. Meaning all of these are at the same layer here, at the same level. I wanna actually separate them out a bit. Okay, so make sure that the mountains that are way in the back are literally pushed backwards. And these trees that are way in the front are pulled up front. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with the trees. So that is selected. And this is where our, uh, this is where our little toolbar is going to come in handy. This is our advanced animation toolbar. So I'm clicking here and I want to maintain the size. Okay. And then what I want to do is click and move this forward. Okay, so it's keeping it the same size, but I'm bringing it forward. All right. And the next thing I do is we're going to click on the river and we're telling it to maintain the size. So we'll bring this forward as well. But I'm keeping it very distant uh, from where the trees are. We'll grab the next part of the mountains, we'll pull this a little bit forward. And these mountains, we're gonna push them back a little bit. Okay, now if you notice, it's actually looking way back. So the next part, the next set of mountains, I'm gonna push those even further back. And our sky, last but not least, they're gonna push it pretty far back. All right, now, the reason we did maintain size, everything looks identical to where we started off, like nothing has changed here, okay? So what I can do is, let's deselect that real quick. Uh, what we're about to do is go ahead and add in a camera and then we're gonna animate that. Before we do that, let's go ahead and extend this out at least for 60 frames on all of our layers. So I'm holding down my shift key and selecting all my layers here. And let's do F5 to extend. Okay. And we are now going to add a camera. So I'm going to come over here. Let's do plus and add a camera. Okay. Now, what I want to show you is right now, if you look at the top, we have the camera here. So let's say we're on our camera layer. And what I want to be able to do is move that camera around. So I'm going to add this camera to a peg. So the camera selected and we are going to add a camera peg. Okay. Now, just so we can see everything on This layer, this layer here, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I select our camera peg here. And what I want to show you is over in the top view, I'm going to click right here with the camera selected. And as I start moving, we start seeing a lot of how this is going to work. Okay, and how our multiplane a uh, little camera view works. Now, technically, our cloud should not move that much. So I am going to probably do something a little bit different in a moment here. And we'll do that actually probably the next lesson, just so I don't confuse you. So let's go ahead and we're going to turn on our animate button. And we'll start by adding a keyframe at the very beginning here. Let's do F6. And let's go to the end, to frame 60. 
And by frame 60, I want to push ahead. Let's go about right here. All right, and now I'll play this. Let's go ahead and turn on our loop. And if we play this, and there is our first part of the animation. So now you actually understand a little bit more of how things can work and how you set them up on different layers and everything like that. So this is going to be an interesting part. And I think I will give you one little sneak peek here. What I'd like to do is to make sure that our sky doesn't really change size because it's pretty far back there. Okay. So what I want to do is let's go to the sky and I'm going to pull this down and so it is parented with the camera peg. It is still far in the background but I have it parented with the camera so whenever the camera moves the sky moves with it. Okay so now if I play this works a little bit better And make sure I'm going to turn off my animate for a moment. Uh, I do want to do a few changes here. I'm thinking there's not enough movement, so I'm going to make them a little more, make the pieces a little more distant. And see what that looks like. Okay, so you can start twe tweaking these and twisting some things around. The one thing I'm probably not going to mess with is the water, but uh, I'm going to start playing around with these and just to get them to do the right look. And again, the main reason I'm doing this is to make sure that uh, you're not wasting too much time doing working on the illustration. You just want to figure out, yes, is this the look that I want? And I think it looks pretty decent, actually. So we'll be catching up on the next section where we'll start working on uh, rotating and doing different camera angles, as well as we're going to give some movement to the clouds. Not that they're moving uh along with the camera as much, but we're going to actually have the clouds kind of blowing in like the wind is kind of moving in just a little bit of time lapse, a little, little nice look to that. So this has been Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. Remember, keep it simple. Make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, rethink the idea. Have a good one.